Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to put some formulas behind whatever we were talking about um, amplitude um, modulation, AM radio. Um, basically, physics always contains some practical aspects and some theoretical aspects. So today we'll talk about theory. Um, and it's really very, very easy uh, material today. Um, basically, it's how uh, you can express in mathematics the AM transmission, amplitude mod uh, uh, mod modulation. This lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, in this particular lecture, I would definitely encourage you to not only listen to this lecture, which you can find on YouTube, let's say, but go to the website, which contains, obviously, the link to the lect lecture itself. But also, every lecture um, uh, of this course uh, has notes, very detailed notes, and in this particular case, there are a few graphs, which I will definitely try to um, uh, reproduce here on the board, but it will not be as, as good as I had presented it in, in the notes because it was actually some kind of a graphical software which I was using. Um, there is also a prerequisite course called F uh, Mass for Teens on the same website, uh, which I again do encourage you to, to familiarize yourself with. Um, I mean, if you are proficient in, in mass, including calculus, that's, that's fine, you don't have to. But there are many different aspects in the Physics 14 course which require good mathematical knowledge, especially vector algebra, calculus, and some other things. Algebra, of course. So, let's talk about um, theory behind AM transmission. Well, what we know about right now is that at the heart of AM transmission you have an LC circuit which with proper treatment uh, there is some source of energy etc etc it actually has its own uh, oscillations and oscillations are um, the frequency of oscillation is based on the uh, capacitance of the capacitor and inductance of the inductor. So, if this is given, there is also an internal, its own uh, angular frequency of oscillations, and the uh, electric current in this particular circuit is oscillating something according to this particular as a function of, of time. So omega is related to this thing and A is amplitude of these oscillations. They, it, it also obviously depends on um, amount of initial um, energy which is accumulated in the capacitor, etc. So this is an amplitude, and it's fixed, and this is <coughs> uh, angular frequency of oscillations, which is also fixed. Well, sometimes you probably know that um, omega is also equal to 2 pi f, where f is a plane frequency, which means number of cycles per second. And because this is angular, it's in radians and every cycle is 2 pi radians. So uh, usually in, in, in all theoretical um, articles, uh, textbooks, etc., they're using um, angular uh, frequency, but sometimes instead of this omega, they're using 2 pi, phi, uh, 2 pi phi, uh, f. Um, now there is also a component which might or might not um, be included, which is a phase shift plus some angle phi. But again, it all depends and it's not really important for this, this particular discussion. So, 
if you will attach antenna, transmitting antenna to the circuit, it will transmit frequency, this particular frequency. And the graph will be of this function is obviously something like this. Constant uh, amplitude and constant frequency. Now, we were talking that AM transmission requires modulation, which means it's the amplitude which, which should actually change. If these are the sound waves, then the amplitude should change. It should be bigger here and smaller here. Bigger here and smaller here. So this type of transformation should be achieved uh, by putting certain um, uh, connections, certain other elements into a circuit. But right now I'm uh, interested in how in, in theory it's, it can be expressed in equation kind of style. And here is how. So, for example, we have this, and this is an amplitude of my uh, original carrier, and this is my uh, angular frequency of, of this carrier LC circuit. And this is carrier. Okay. Now, let's assume that we have some source of sound, one particular note which sounds one tone, one note. Well, it's vibration of the air. Now, what does it mean, vibration? It's change of pressure. So when this pressure comes to a microphone, it does something inside the microphone, and as a result, we have some kind of a current which goes from the microphone, which can influence this. And uh, this current is also oscillating um, with certain amplitude and angular frequency, which correspond to the note which is taken. <coughs> I think I was talking about high A, um, which is like 440 mm, kilohertz, something like this. And the amplitude depends, obviously, on the how strongly you really uh, vibrating, how strongly you, you, you blow into a horn or, 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 or pluck the uh, violin uh, string or something. <coughs> so, we can assume that there is something which is basically a pressure of the air, which also depends uh, on, uh, on the time, and it has its own, uh, this is amplitude of sound, and also um, angular frequency of the sound. So this is basically how I describe um, the sound. And as a result, there is some kind of a current which influences this. But the question is how it influences. So the answer is, I'll just write it down, and you will see that it makes sense. So, I'm using exactly the same equation here. I'm just adding to the amplitude, constant amplitude, this function which actually represents the pressure of the air. So, in sync with changing of the pressure of the air, obviously through the microphone or whatever other device, <coughs> we can influence this amplitude. Now, we do not change this, the main uh, frequency, but we do change only the amplitude. Now, how can it be done? Well, in, in theory, you understand that if you have, for instance, some kind of a connection like this, and you have electric current, I1 here, I2 here, we will have I1 plus I2, right? So that's how it's done. 
I mean, some kind of circuit connection from output from the microphone should actually go into this circuit somehow. I'm not really discussing how, but it will end its own oscillations, these ones, to the amplitude of these. Now, the frequency is still related to um, uh, properties of this LC circuit, but the amplitude as, as long as we will properly connect it. And the, how properly is probably outside of this course, it's for professionals. Uh, or if you want, if you want to, to be a radio amateur or something like this, you can learn how these circuits are done. But basically, this is the goal. Now, there are some much more complicated sounds. I mean, this is the simple sound. Now, what's the complicated? Well, when the whole orchestra is playing, it's not just one note. What is it then? Well, again, if you have two different sources of oscillation of the air pressure here and here, and they come to the same point somehow, they propagate obviously to every point, you have the input from both sources of sound. Well, they add, they uh, superimpose one oscillation onto another and the actual oscillation will be uh, represented as sum of uh, different oscillations which means you will have this S1 plus AS2 cosine omega uh, S2T plus S3 etc. So all these sounds are combined together and they come to the microphone and it's a very, very kind of chaotic um, graph, if you will, represent this function um, graphically. But no matter, no matter what it is, it all is um, combined together and concentrated in oscillation of the current which goes out from the microphone. So this current, properly connected to this circuit, will influence... So no matter how complex this equation is, which represents the sound, it all will be hidden here. Now, let's see how it will look graphically. Because that's a very interesting aspect of this thing. I will try to <coughs> reproduce it graphically, but again, in the notes for this lecture on unisor.com, so you go to unisor.com, choose physics for teens, um, uh, part of this course is called waves, and then there is a chapter um, radio, and the lecture is in there. The lecture is called M equation. So in that particular notes, I reproduce graphics much better, but I will try. So what happens if you have um, very frequently oscillating um, main carrier um, waves, electromagnetic waves, or current in this uh, LC circuit, and you will add to this very even maybe chaotic but really not as frequently um, oscillating because sound oscillating from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz while LC oscillating is in kilohertz, megahertz, etc. So, um, so it's at least like 10, 20 times greater than uh, even the, uh, I, I think I calculated in the previous lecture that the ratio of the frequency <coughs> of AM <coughs> radio even against the highest note um, uh, heard by 
uh, human ear is something like 400 or 500 something in this range so it's much more frequently oscillating than this so what happened if you add this to this well you will basically have something like this so you see the amplitude of the high uh, frequency oscillation will be more or less um, seen in sync with the oscillations of the sound what happens if this frequency is not um, as high well then you will not actually be able to inscribe the um, uh, oscillation of the uh, LC circuit precisely into each curve of the sound so it will be something like this I mean it will some representation will be but you're not, not exactly it not it will be up and down so there will be some resemblance but the sum of two impulses will not be as clearly um, defining the sound waves as if it's uh, a high frequency and the higher the frequency the better you will be able to inscribe this amplitude into the sound and obviously if it's better inscribed on the transmission it will be much easier uh, 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 um, scrambled out. it will be deciphered by the receiver obviously so the more precisely you represent um, the input sound using the high frequency the easier it is to receive the clear sound and considering that AM has certain upper limit of the frequ frequency I think it's like 1.5 or 1.6 uh, megahertz uh, it has its own limitation of precision how you really represent the sound and that's why very high quality hi-fi um, transmission is not done by AM radio <coughs> it's done using a different uh, technology uh, like frequency modu modulation which we will talk about so basically um, that's it I wanted to talk about what's very important is to take a look at the graph uh, of the sum of high frequency and sound frequency no matter how sound is complex if the high frequency is high enough it will really represent it well um, and again because AM has certain range of frequency and there is a maximum frequency there is a maximum quality which is not the hi-fi but that's a different story so in the notes for this lecture I uh, present um, the very good graphical representation of this type of addition of the sound wave on the top of um, high frequency oscillation um, of the base LC circuit so I do suggest you to read these notes um, after you listen to this lecture um, and be prepared for the next part of this radio uh, related um, lectures about frequency modulation this is something which I find for myself much more complex um, but we will talk about this another time. So thanks very much and good luck.